Hello. So, how do you prepare yourself for your day? This is the key question I'm starting my talk with, and I'll have one of you answer it. So, how do you prepare yourself for your day? I usually wake up, brush my hair, my teeth, then I go out. Interesting. Now I'm going to share my life experience with you. Hi again, I'm Aya Sharaf, I'm 23 years old, I'm a full-time dancer, and for me, life is a dance. So, we have two people in this equation. Aya, the dancer, and then we have Aya, the human, the dreamer, the sister, the friend, the lover, the employee, etc. As humans, we all have dreams and ambitions, and we never actually know when we'll achieve them. So what we have to do is work hard and make each day count. So I'm going to talk about the steps I follow before dancing, and then I'm going to also talk about the steps I follow as a human being. So everything is parallel. So as a dancer, I start first by stretching, and warming up my body. I do this to prep my body. And then as a human, I start by setting my intention to prep my mind. So we have the body and the mind. Step two is going over the moves just to remind myself of the dance steps. And for the human, for Aya the human, is writing my goals to remind my mind of my day purpose. And I said day purpose and not life purpose because we need to focus about, again, making each day count. So every small step is way more important than the bigger one, and it helps us achieve our ultimate and final goal. So always make sure to enjoy the process, because most of the times it's way more important than the end result. For the third step, I personally, I listen to the music, I follow the beat, I focus on the tempo, I try not to go faster or slower than the rhythm. And for Aya, the human, personally, what I do is, after writing, setting the intention, writing my goal is being present. And that means also not rushing, focusing on the now, following the tempo of my day. Right now, both of my mind and body are present here in this theater talking to you. So, Aya, the human, and Aya, the dancer. For me, dance shaped my life. Because of the discipline I had through my dance education, I can now act as a normal human being. I'm gonna talk about one thing that actually this was an experience that's very, very, very sentimental for me. After saying dance shaped my life, I held on to it and I decided to make a career out of it. So of course I went to school and in my final year I started applying to colleges because this was the normal thing to do, right? You have to go to university. And then I got accepted into architecture school. And it's a hard major. I went into uni for four years. I kept on studying architecture and dancing at the same time. It was very hectic. And honestly, I did not have a social life. I was always focusing on Aya the professional. But I did that because my love towards dance made me get through it. After graduating, I graduated in 2020. It was in the middle of the pandemic. I had a job as an architect. And then I left it three months later just because I had an opportunity to, to dance in an Arab music show. It was a one-time dance, just like performing in the finals. But the training of this job, this dance job, was interfering with my 9 to 5. So, of course, I left my 9 to 5 because I wanted to dance. And then, of course, the whole world was against me. And it wasn't easy, because in the Arab world, dance is not taken seriously, and art in general. It is, it is always considered as a hobby. So, I left my job and I started dancing and I started to make a career out of it. And out, actually, when I was a kid and whenever someone just asked me like, what do you want to be when you grow up? My answer was a dancer. But their response was always like, mm -hmm, really, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And even at 17, when I told my father that I just want to dance, he told me, so you have to go to university. And then I went to university, I studied for four years, and then I left it, and now I do not work as an architect. I'm purely a dancer. Other than that, career change is very common because we don't get to do what we love. We're always pressured to become either engineers or doctors or any traditional high-earning profession. Because, again, dance is not considered as something, or art in general in the Arab world is not considered as a serious job that would last for later on. 
You do not need a college degree to be successful. I'm personally working in a field without a college degree. So the resources in Lebanon for dance and the education is not that accessible, and we do not have a lot of opportunities. But I took what I have, and I built something out of it. When I was only 20 years old, I went to my dance instructor. She owns a dance school. And I told her that I want to open something, like a space, under this dance school. And I just want to create a concept in Lebanon, which is hosting daily classes, different dance styles, where anyone from all around Lebanon can just come and take the class. And so we did. And now I have, every week, I host one workshop. And I have almost 30 to 50 dancers from all over Lebanon coming to uh, assist to this workshop, just sharing their love of dance. We're just going to put now a video explaining how I do the workshops. do something, and I'm using this piece to express myself, decide to host the class. So thank you for coming. And nothing I do goes unseen, so while I feel your stairs, Whichever you feel comfortable with, the Do you know where? Step, hop, hop, five, six, seven, eight. Step, hop, hop. Be famous, I want to be a star, I want to be a movie. Loving what I do, sharing it with the world, making money out of it is my personal success. The moral of the story is always do what you love because you won't be happy if you don't do what you love on a daily basis. Focus on your dreams, focus on your goals, even if the whole world is against you, even if your father is against you, as long as you love what you're doing, you will always succeed. And nothing worth having comes easy. Thank you.